The QF-17 Pounder gun is considered one of the best anti-tank guns in the hands of the British Army during World War II, but this gun had many problems in actual use, the most important of which is that the gun is too cumbersome. If a self-propelled anti-tank weapon carrying the 17-pounder gun could be designed, the combat would be much more flexible. Throughout World War II, Britain designed various self-propelled weapons carrying the 17-pounder gun, such as the Archer Tank Destroyer. However, there was also an experimental weapon in Britain at the time, the Thornycroft Amazon 6-4 self-propelled 17-pound anti-tank gun, which, like the Archer, could only fire rearward. This uniquely shaped, wheeled, self-propelled anti-tank gun was converted from the Thornycroft Amazon 6x4 truck, and the design department did not even bother to change the name, just used it directly. This truck was a medium-weight model introduced in 1933, equipped with an auxiliary gearbox, and remained in extensive service with the British military during World War II. There were approximately 2,000 versions of the truck with a crane, of which the Royal Air Force used about 1,800. In terms of the truck's performance, it was also a good transport vehicle during World War II, with a sturdy and reliable chassis. There is not much information about this self-propelled anti-tank gun, after all, it was just an experimental weapon developed in 1942, and not very representative. The main information that can be found online is mostly some photos, with very little detailed description. The vehicle was covered with steel armor all around, and some sources indicate that the armor thickness all around was 50 millimeters, and the total weight of the vehicle was 13.75 tons. This seems somewhat unreasonable because covering such a large area of the truck with armor, if the armor thickness all around reaches 50 millimeters, along with the weight of the gun and ammunition, the total weight of the vehicle would inevitably soar. Also, regardless of whether Britain would be willing to install so much valuable armor plating on a modified armored vehicle in 1942, even if it were installed, the chassis might not necessarily be able to support it. Therefore, this 50 mm thickness may refer to specific heavily defended areas, such as the front of the armored vehicle or the ammunition rack positions. The main weapon was of course the QF-17 pounder gun, but due to the limitations of the truck's structure, the gun could not face forward, and was instead installed in the original cargo box position with the gun facing the rear of the vehicle. The gun was surrounded by large areas of armor plating for protection, and there was a relatively large firing port at the rear, so the firing angle of the gun should be quite wide. From the surviving photos, it can be seen that the muzzle brake of the gun was not the usual style of the 17-pounder gun, but was more like the trumpet shape of the 6-pounder gun. Although the designers successfully mounted the gun on the truck chassis, the practicality of the self-propelled anti-tank gun should be low because the 17-pounder gun itself is heavy and has strong recoil, which is difficult for a chassis that was originally just a commercial medium-sized truck to withstand, and cannot provide a stable firing platform. Additionally, the structure of the gun facing backward, along with the weight of the armor covering the entire body, greatly limited the vehicle's combat capabilities to the point where we even have reason to doubt that it had even the most basic off-road performance. For whatever reason at the time, Britain, which had a strong demand for anti-tank weapons, did not mass-produce the Thornycroft Amazon 6x4 self-propelled 17-pound anti-tank gun, which indicates that its performance level was indeed not very good. Instead, the focus was shifted to installing the 17-pounder gun on tracked chassis, such as the Archer and Firefly tanks, and so on.